Hi, this is Ken Schultz. I'm going to give you a quick tutorial. Now, this is something I've been wanting to give you for a while, and it's how to turn your dull looking images into stunning images. Now, you find that if you go through your photo collections on your hard drive, you'll find this whole bunch of images that kind of didn't come out that great as far as you know having really rich colors because it might have been a dull day or for some reason the colors are a little muted and and you tend to just put those aside and not choose those as your favorites so you get this whole collection of photographs that could be good but just because at the time the just colors just didn't hit you you end up either discarding them or just you know neglecting them on your hard drive so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick tutorial using Lightroom and a lot of these tips I've learned from Phil Steele's excellent Lightroom course and a few other tips I've picked up and I'm just going to run through a workflow showing you an example image which I didn't really pay much attention to it basically it just got put on my hard drive and I left it for many years and then once I'd done some tutorials and became a bit more familiar with Lightroom's workflow I came across this image and I thought okay well let me try a few things on that image particularly and I was quite amazed on the transformation from a really dull image to quite a stunning result in the end because the, the focus was sharp enough and the composition was was pretty good I just really needed to get the colors to pop and it was a relatively dull day so um, let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you this quick tutorial Okay, so I've opened Lightroom, this is Lightroom 4, and this is the image I'm going to be dealing with. It was a photograph I took in Australia on the New South Wales coast at a place called Emerald Beach. Now the sun had set and or was behind a little bit too much cloud, so it kind of dulled the whole scene a lot. And so the picture basically lacks contrast and colour. So this photograph ended up sitting on my hard drive for quite a while till I did, did uh, Phil Steele's amazing Lightroom course and I decided to dig up some of my old photos and try some of the things I learned. So let's open this up in the develop module. So this was in the library module. Now if you go to the develop module, that's where you change the settings of your photograph. And typically you have these presets open as well but Lightroom gives you the option to shut down windows so that you have a little bit more room or, or shut down panels at least so because I'm working on a laptop here I can actually shut down the presets panel and click on this arrow and shut down the top menu so you can still access it by moving your mouse over so it's really handy for maximizing your workspace on the image so one of the first things I do with photographs is to just correct the cropping and any rotations that I need like in this image you can see that the horizon is a little tilted so first of all I go into the crop tool and so you can actually set the aspect ratio to this if you don't want it to change you can tick original or you can tick different aspect ratios for instance if you want a photograph printed out at 5 by 7 you can choose 5 by 7 so in this case I just want to keep it to the original proportions and on this side you can see I can just choose these corners or the sides and just pull my image in and that's one way I can re reframe the image or crop the image but in this case I just want to do the rotation initially so I choose this one here which is the straighten tool and I could just do the angle manually by moving this slider but in this case I'd rather just use the straighten tool and what you do is you click somewhere on the horizon and then you drag across the horizon line and then when you let go it straightens it to that particular line so that's looking better then I just hit enter so we've got a straighter horizon line now and actually that's probably a little bit too much let me let me pull that back a little bit okay because there is a little bit of a curvature to this shot anyway so I don't want to go overboard with that. Okay, that looks much more natural now. And as far as framing go, you'll notice that there's different overlays and you press if you press the O key, you'll find that Lightroom toggles through all these different overlays. Grid, this is the classic thirds 
overlay which divides your picture into third cubes basically and I like to use the golden mean which is the next option and that's a little in from the thirds so what this is 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 this has the ratio of 1 is to 1.618 from each side and from the top and the bottom so it gives you these lines a little in towards the middle from, compared to the thirds lines so um, it's really good to use these as, as a guideline for good composition. For instance, here I want to put this island on this intersection here. So what I can do is I can just drag it up a little and get that intersection of the golden mean lines on that little island. And my horizon's pretty much exactly on that golden mean line too. Okay, so I'm happy with that composition. I'm just going to hit enter. Now this is non-destructive. If I find I want to change that crop, I can always go back into the crop tool and you'll see the original image is there. So that's the good thing about Lightroom. It actually keeps the original information and you make edits and it, and it basically does all these edits on your photograph but keeps the original photograph in the background so that you can always go back a few steps and go back to your original. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is pull up the color and the, the tonal value. Now at the top here you can see the histogram there's a fair gap in the blacks here so my actual pixels of it, my image start sort of in from the edge which means they're not they more gray the pixels it hasn't actually maximized the black here and the same on the light side I, I basically have no white pixels in here so what it, that means is my image is more centered around grayscale which is partly why the contrast is not very strong which this is basically showing that most of my histogram is towards the middle meaning more gray values so one of the things I can do is I can pull up the blacks and the whites and the highlights and the shadows for that matter so let's first of all take up the whites so when I drag this you'll notice this histogram at the top shifts all the white all those pixels towards the white end and a really cool trick I came across I'm not sure if it was in Phil's course it might have been through some other tutorial I watched but if you hold down the alt or option key and you drag the slider what happens is you get a view where it stays completely black and then you start seeing any pixels that are getting overexposed so they go beyond white so it shows up so that way you can just drag it back just so that you're just on that edge there but not overexposing too many pixels and then likewise with the blacks you can hold that alt or option key down and then drag that histogram down so you're dragging the pixels into the more black region and there too you'll see the actual black underexposed pixels appearing on a white background so it's really handy to to quickly fine tune that range so in this case I only want to few true black pixels so so there we go we've pulled up the contrast of this image already by just spreading that those tonal values to the white and black extremes so I can also uh, push the shadows down a little to s strengthen that contrast and the highlights I can push up a, a fair bit as well so that's basically pushing not the darkest pixels and lightest but just in from that pushing those to more of an extreme okay so that's looking a lot better now one of the things I do too is I like to push up the clarity up a bit and what that does is it basically pushes it creates a bit of micro contrast so it just it basically makes things look a bit more sharp and more focused in your image so it's a real handy handy little slider to use vibrance now that's going to change the color it's going to basically make the colors more extreme and in this case I can put it up a fair amount because our image is is not very colorful if, the, if your picture is colorful already if you, and you turn this way up you'll find it starts looking very artificial but in our case we can actually push the vibrance pretty high without having an artificial looking image saturation now that's one where you have to be a little bit more careful because you put the saturation way up and then you start getting a real fruity artificial look so saturation should be used 
with care and typically I, I wouldn't put it much more than 10 but on this image I can push a little bit more because we started with a, a much duller image. So already our image is looking a lot better. Uh, what I would tend to do is I'd probably want to cool off the image a little. So probably pull down the white balance. Yeah, that's looking better. I like that that blue coming into the sky there. So that's by pulling down the color temperature. So I will say I'm working on a raw file here. So that gives me a lot more color and lightness information that I can adjust compared to JPEG. So now let me turn down the tint a little too. Uh, actually, that's looking nice. So I've, I've turned the tint up a little to plus 11. Tint gives a basically a overall sort of greeny yellow to magenta. So in this, this image I like turning it up a little but not too much about just to pull out the the reds and the purples a little bit more there in the sky. Okay so that's looking fairly good. So just a little bit more color information in our image. Already looking a lot stronger. So now one of the final things I tend to do is once I've done those basic settings I go down into detail and if you drag around in this window here, it does, does a close-up, you can see we have a fair bit of noise here. And what I want to do is bring up the luminance noise reduction and that'll take a lot of that away. So straight away that smoothed it out a fair bit. And color noise I have, I'll put a little bit up there on the color noise. One thing you can do with um, sharpening in this panel is you can Bring up sharpening but you can actually be selective by masking off areas. So here if I press that Alt or Option key down and I drag that up. So what this does is wherever it's white the sharpening will be in, in effect but the black areas it won't. So that way you can sh selectively sharpen and not cr create extra noise on the smooth areas. So I could do something like about there, mask that so all the broad smooth areas will not be sharpened and then I can add some sharpening to the more detailed areas. There's also lens corrections you can do here. If you tick that it'll do some adjustments according to the particular lens. If it can detect your lens that you used it'll bring that up immediately. Um, and that certainly you can see it actually removes some of the warping there in the center of the image. But to be quite honest I actually prefer that slight vignette on the side. Now one of the final things I do is just to make the sky a little bit more dramatic and the tool you'd use for that is this gradient or graduated filter tool. And it's effectively the same as using a graduated filter in front of your camera lens. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to turn the exposure down. So let's pull the exposure down to let's say okay I'm going to make it quite dramatic at first so you can see the effect of this. So what you do is you just click at the top of your graduation and you pull down and if you hold down shift it will snap so it's perfectly straight rather than being at a slight angle like that. And you can drag this down pretty much past the horizon line to affect the sky. Okay so that's obviously too much but now what I'll show you is if you change that you can either lighten it or you can darken it. So it's really great for creating a bit more drama in the sky. So in this case I want to just add a bit like that and that looks pretty good. And in fact you can even cool the sky down a bit if, if required. Or if you're in a scene where you wanted to make your sunset more dramatic you could literally warm it up. So you could basically bring out more of the reds in the sky. But in my case I'm just wanna, I just want to, I like it with a little bit more blue and a little bit more drama there. So that's the graduated filter screen. So let me close that and there's our final image. And of course you can go back in there and you'll see there's a little icon and you can get, click on that and re-edit that original graduation. So really handy tool that and I, I like the way you can go back and, and adjust things if you're not happy with it. 
So there we go, that's our final dull to dramatic scene. If I show you that scene and I reset it to the original, you'll see that's, that's what we're looking at. Uh, fairly dull, needed a bit of work on the composition and the horizon straightness and then we've gone to this which I think is a huge improvement and now that's something I wouldn't mind printing or at least posting on my website. So I hope you found that useful. I think Lightroom is really a great tool for organizing your photos and it's an excellent tool for for doing these kinds of corrections. It, when it comes to doing massive image enhancements then Photoshop is the way to go but to be honest 90 percent of my images can be fixed just with Lightroom alone and definitely have a look at Phil's Lightroom course he has some free videos so just click on the link I think Phil's done an excellent job of really explaining Lightroom's tools very well and also the philosophy of how you use Lightroom to deal with your photographs okay I hope you found this tutorial useful thank you very much